Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you Tales of Tyria. <laughs> This week on Tales of Tyria, we're gearing up, ladies and gentlemen, five days. Five days! Less than five days. It's coming! The Guild Wars 2 beta. Are you ready? We'll make sure of it. Stay tuned. Can I unmute you guys now? Are you done laughing? I'm prepared. Yeah. Are you prepared? I gotta oh. hole up for five days, just in case. You never know what could happen between now and then. I can't leave the house. What if I die tomorrow never having played Guild Wars 2? That would be... This thing's hot. I'm taking the... It looked really hot. It is hot. It's hot in here already. 76 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome! To Tales of Tyria, your one-stop shop for the Guild Wars 2 podcast. That's all that she wrote. We've got a great show for you today. Like I said, I am Bridger, your host for this evening, and we have Freelancer joining us. Welcome, sir. Hey, how's it going? Not bad. Vega also here. Hello, sir. Good evening. And replacing Kai this week, who couldn't make it, unfortunately, we have the one, the only, Great. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here again. All right, so, wow. We're finally here, guys. We finally have confirmation on when we'll actually be able to play. That is, when I will be able to play. Because I can confirm that I have not ever played yet on any of the <laughs> occasions. All right, <clears throat> Bridger rant cut off before we get going. All right, let's talk about the show updates. We got a great show for you today. Glad you got a hold of the program, however you may have found it. Please, would you tell a friend or two about us, won't you? You know, when you're convincing them to join you, pre-purchase to the dark side, as it were. Uh, also, uh, check out our twitch.tv team pages, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be streaming like crazy. Both me and Freelancer. Vega, I think, is going to be streaming. Great. Are you streaming? When are you streaming? Oh, all weekend long. All weekend streaming. long. So you can find all of us at the Tales of Tyria team page, which is twitch.tv slash team slash T-O-T. However, you can also find us and the rest of Team Legacy streaming at... Uh, twitch.tv slash team slash team legacy. So that is going to be epic. So, you know, if you, if you got your friends who can't play or haven't pre-purchased, they're on the fence, just sit them down in front of a computer and point them to the <laughs> twitch.tv streams because it's going to be awesome. And we will be streaming all through the beta. I know I will be. I got Friday off. I got Monday off. I'm going to be like 24-7 except when I'm sleeping. I guess that goes without saying. So... That having been said, I want to point out that next week's show is going to be on Monday is the actual recording for the show because we're not going to take time away from the beta. <laughs> Are you guys crazy? No. Silly people. We may have a special in-game event that we're streaming uh, on the regular show time at 8 o'clock. We're still trying to put that together, so we'll put the details out there uh, at that time. So definitely tune in 8 p.m. on next Sunday and 8 p.m. on next Monday. Twitch.tv slash Tales of Tyria. All right. If you want, you can send us feedback. Feedback at TalesOfTeria.com. Ah, last important thing before we move on to other stuff. After the show here tonight, we have a special League of Legends match between two Guild Wars 2 guilds. That is Team Legacy and Edge. So Edge and Team Legacy both uh, have been working together. They've, uh, they've, we've had some of them come on our, our TeamSpeak server. We've been playing League with them a whole bunch. And they cha was, did we challenge them or did they challenge us? How did that happen, Freelancer? Uh, it was sort of both ways. It was like a little bit of smack talk in their TeamSpeak. It was fun. All right. Um, but then, uh, <laughs> well, we'll get to the town hall meeting. But, yeah, a lot of good things All happening. Right. It is, it is going to be awesome. We're going to be casting it. It's going to be me and eye drops, and that's all going to happen after the show. So we're going to end here promptly by 9 o'clock so that we can make sure that happened. Uh, to that end, and by the way, even if you haven't played League of Legends, even if you have no idea what it is, just watch. It's going to be a, a wacky fun time. We'll explain it as we go as best we can. So we also have 
some contest winners. I know there were a lot of people waiting to hear about this particular thing for this week. There are three winners, Marson, Mike, and Joe. I'm not going to give out their last names, but they will receive an email between today and tomorrow with their Guild Wars 2 beta keys. Uh, so they can give them to their friends who didn't pre-purchase, as it were. So <laughs> congratulations to those guys, and uh, we're glad that we were able to get those. Thanks to Martin, again, from ArenaNet for helping us out there. All right, let's get into a little feedback, shall we? From last week, we had the question, innate talent versus training. That was what we had with the question of the week last week. And we also had a sort of uh, bit where we talked about Guild Wars 2 role players. So I wanted to point out, uh, somebody sent us a link, Guild, War to, sorry, Guild Wars 2 roleplayers.com is a large RP community site with over 500 people. So if anybody else is interested in checking that out, that's a good place to go. <clears throat> and the best uh, piece of feedback we had from last week was from Oji Maru. He says, quote, Practice is often mistaken for preparation. Practice is merely a method to eliminate surprises through repetition, while preparation ensures you're in the right arena the moment you step up to the stage. If you've ever watched any tournament, you'd have seen it. The players gear up expecting the meta they have seen countless times in countless games, then get totally swept aside when their opponent kicks off with an unorthodox playstyle. Some players manage to rally themselves for a comeback. Some stick to their guns and eventually go down guns blazing like the 4th of July sparklers. Worse yet are the pro gamers who grew to fame through online tournaments only to choke when playing at a stage on a live LAN event. Cheers and thanks for the show. Ojimaru. Thank you, sir, for the bit of info, uh, well, a uh, bit of insight there. Uh, so uh, you, let's ask, let's turn to the panel here. Great. Preparation versus practice. What do you think of his distinction there? That practice has to do with simply getting something down by rote repetition, whereas preparation is preparing for the actual conditions of the tournament. I would agree with him in the in the aspect of repetition. I definitely feel when you're practicing, you're doing a lot of the same things over and over because you want to get good at like kind of that one thing. But you're not like preparing for everything at once. You can't actually physically prepare for everything at once. So I agree with him on that. And I, I like that, I, that use of a word. That was a good word, uh, repetition, mm -hmm. that he used. I really like that. But uh, he's definitely right. I've seen this happen in major tournaments. I can The one right I'm remembering off the top of my head was at uh, MLG for StarCraft II was uh, Slayer's Boxer versus Idra. Uh, Boxer was down like three games, and then out of nowhere he just does these crazy builds that like no one really ever like noticed or did, and he pulls like three games off of Idra in a row hmm. by just like going totally off the grid. So that's very interesting. So Vega, if you're, but have you have you done a lot of real you know competitive? Have you been in a clan or a guild or something like that? They've been in competitive you know PvP style situations. I haven't done much competitive uh, gaming, per se. Okay. Uh, freelancer. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you had any, any reactions to what, uh, what he posted here. Um, well, the, he, uh, he has a lot of intelligence in that post. He's right in the, in the respect that uh, they get totally swept aside when they play with an unorthodox play style. He's wording it all fancy and, you know, flowery, but what that is is cheese. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> that's, I mean, I'm going to call it for what it is. I mean, in StarCraft, you have cheese. You have cheese in every game. Uh, in Guild Wars 2, we're going to have cheese. Uh, you know, Team Legacy, the website, we're, we're covering tournament, the private tournament scene. And I'm sure we're going to have articles on the different types of cheese that come out. But it, cheese it, is such a negative uh, term. Do you think it's a think negative that's, term? It's, is it a bad thing? It is thing? what it is, though. I mean, unorthodox play where you have a set meta. In having cheese, I'm not saying cheese is a bad thing. We we talked about that a few episodes ago, but it's cheese. I mean, it's it's one of those things that that the people that have that repetition that he's mentioning there, um, they will be able to react to those situations. A good player from a uh, player that just uh, studies that that build, you know, we're talking League of Legends. They just read the build and they play the build exactly like they do in every single game for 20 games straight. They build that build the same exact way. When they do get to the tournament scenes and they get uh, they get like all this attention drawn on them, and then all of a sudden somebody throws something different at them. They won't know how to react. So he is 100% on on par with that repetition. That's why Korean teams are always the best teams out there. I mean, 
I hate to admit that, but that's the that's the truth. We all know why Koreans are always dominating. Take War Machine or any of these big teams from either GVG or even if you look at uh, Wow, they just play 20 hours a day. I mean, it's just nonstop game after game after game after game, and they will play 30 to 40 games a day, and that's just a normal day for them. And it's just that repetition. You cannot beat repetition. Well, let me let me ask you something now. What, how do you define cheese? Is it something that normally would has no chance to work if your opponent knows it's coming? Is that the idea? Is that what we're talking about? No, cheese, cheese is defined by, uh, by players on an individual basis. Like, I, will not, I would not consider a, uh, a, a six-pull Zerg Rush a cheese build. But somebody that has it set in their mind that this is how the game should be played... And then they they encounter that they call that cheese. It, it is it's in the eye of the beholder. It really is because uh, you mentioned that tower back when we had this conversation. You mentioned that tower thing in Age of Empires, right? Remember that? Mm -hmm. um, you know that was considered a cheese. But I guarantee that a lot of the the tournament scene saw that as a normal strategy. It was just you were either the guy that could beat that or you were the guy that couldn't, and that was what defined you. Whether you can react to situations like that in Guild Wars Two. Getting back to the main focus here. There are going to be cheese builds, let's say all elementalists or all mesmer, and they all use a particular skill or whatever it might be. And you've been playing these mixed builds for so long when you come across this group that just mass AOE's meteor showers on you with five elementalists. You're going to, I mean, half your team, if not yourself, is going to call it a cheese build. But it's going to take a, a professional player, we'll just say a skilled player, to look at that and say, that's not a cheese build. That's not stupid or, you know, or anything like that. It's just we have to react to it, and you're going to have the players that start complaining. Uh, we all know those community guys. We're going to see the threads. They're going to be everywhere. Um, and then you're going to have the players that say, okay, I see what they're doing now. Now that I was annihilated, now I'm going to react to it. And that's your two, <laughs> diff uh, two different types of players there. <laughs> Mira, Kittle, Mira Kittle in the chat room says Talon mid is cheese. <laughs> For those oh, wow. of you playing the home game, Freelancer's favorite position in League of Legends is Talon mid, because it absolutely destroys any and all AP carries that are in the mid lane. <laughs> Guaranteed win. All right. Just to win. So, anyway, uh, well, that, it's, a, it's I, I, my understanding. Well, gotta, go ahead. I, gotta, I thought this whole, the whole question of uh, practice versus talent came about as to which is more entertaining to watch. Like someone who just came onto the scene and is doing really well because they're innately good at the game or someone who's been around for a while and has been practicing all their life and got to the top. Am, I, am I mistaken? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the thing, I guess. I don't know. It feels like a false dichotomy to me, honestly. It, it feels like that neither of those things by themselves are going to get you to the top. Everybody's got some combination of the both. I, I think it, depend, well, not, it well, depends saying, on... Not, not saying who's better, not saying one's better than the other, which is more popular. Which would so. you rather follow or watch? Which has a better entertainment value? See, it's all, it's all about personality. I mean, take, uh, take Artosis or take Day9. I mean, you know, I'm huge fans of both of them. It's, it's all personality. Artosis is not the great play, greatest player in StarCraft II. Matter of fact, I don't think he ever got close, but... Everybody still watches him, and he's immensely popular because of just the way he carries himself. Day 9, the same way. He had his, his shine in Brood Wars, but now it's just his personality. Yeah. Um, you, then you, you flip it around, and even guys like Idra, who had his rise to fame, and now he's sort of fallen back, uh, it's, it's his personality that draws the fans. We all, we all want to relate to somebody out in esports, and there's always going to be that one guy that you just you connect with you see him just the way he his attitude is the way he laughs about how he makes mistakes and you will click with that guy and i think the ones that really uh, exasperate that the, they bring out their best personality traits are the ones we're going to be following in guild wars 2 uh it will start out as the guys from i would imagine wow arena uh i hate to say it if if people like swifty come over you know they're going to be the ones that are followed immediately but Everybody has an open field right now. It, it really is. That's the that's the great thing about starting in a brand new MMO. You have the chance now to go out and make a name for yourself personality-wise. You don't have to be the best player out there. It helps, but it, you don't have to. <laughs> and you can you can get fans and you know and stream streaming like what we're doing here. Um, you know you can get. 
three, four hundred people following you, and before you know it, you have a sponsorship, and uh, and it's it's a good time. That's what esports is about. That's what not even just esports, but that's what uh, ArenaNet is really trying to focus on. I hope they it keeps going forward. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely all about uh, personality, as you say. I mean, all you really have to do is play amnesia, scream like a little girl, run away, and then when you get away, you have to scream, <laughs> MAN <God>. MODE! YES! <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar, you have to check out the link I'm about to post in the... And this is before we get to the news here. I'm going to post it in here because it's awesome. And That's one it's of my favorite, favorite videos but of all it's time. A, it's day nine... <laughs> If you, if you don't remember, if you can't find the link, it's Day9 uh, Man Mode. Search that on YouTube. You'll find it. It is hilarious. Love that guy. Uh, can't get enough of that. All right. So. <clears throat> oh, wow. Let's. So good. Let's get yep. going and talk about typing. No, let's talk about the actual beta. What are you guys going to do? Freelancer, what's your plan? Uh, you are going to be playing this game for the first time quote unquote uh, and and assuming what are what are you going to do or what are you going to be preparing to to practicing a specific class are you going to be playing the personal story <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're asking me if I'm going to be concentrating on the personal story. Well, no, well, I, now I'm rather than be, later. <laughs> you, you, you know, like 90% of the community, they're going to be watching streams and they're going to be wanting to see the raid bosses and stuff. I'm unfortunately, I'm going to be the boring guy that's doing nonstop structured PvP. <laughs> um, because, it, oh, well, let me tell you why though. I mean. Why? Uh, it, to me, it just feels like a waste of time to try to level up a character to level 20 or 30 when he's just going to be wiped every single weekend. So I figure that I should take this time to learn the, the meta and learn, uh, in my case, the Mesmer or Thief. I'm still kind of leaning between the two there, but uh, uh, just practice, practice. I mean, burn out games. I'm, I want to try to get maybe 40 to 50 structured PvP matches in a day, and um, that's that's okay. something I can take to the next beta, you know, whereas... Do, killing that that raid boss is not. And that's just yeah. That's just me. Well, to clarify, there are no raids in Guild Wars 2. Vega, what are you going to be doing? Um, I'll probably start out with playing um, the race that the racing class that I don't plan on playing when the actual game comes out. Um, mm -hmm. Like I don't want to. I don't want to play like an engineer. You know, well, I can't be an Asura, but. Um, I don't want to play the person that I want to play in the game because I don't want to have to be like, I already went through this whole starting area and I've already seen all this stuff and it's boring. I'd rather it be like nice and fresh for the first time when you actually get the game so you just kind of keep going with it. Um, that being said, um, I probably won't do as much structured PvP as someone like Freelancer, but I definitely do um, the world v. world kind of stuff. I just feel like, because with the whole structured PvP, like if you're starting the game for the first time, and you just jump right into the PvP and all of a sudden you have all these skills and all this stuff um, that you're just going to get overwhelmed and you're just going to get destroyed when you don't know what you're doing. But you got to so. learn somewhere, though. I mean... you got to learn somewhere. Yeah, but, but that's why the they thing, give you yeah, skills a one at a time. But see, it's, it's in my opinion that if you play PvE first and you plan on doing PvP, you're going you're gonna to develop bad habits through PvE. And then when you do finally get into PvP, those bad habits are going to translate into it, and you're going to have that much of a harder time learning the process, where you'd be far more efficient starting in PvP, learning just as much as everybody else is from the get-go. Because, you, yeah, you don't know the skills, but when you roll into that game, Vega, everybody else doesn't know their skills either. So you'll be on the same playing field, and you'll develop PvP habits. Uh, it, I guess it really depends on whether, you, whether you're concentrating on PvE or if you're concentrating on PvP in the end. Um, mm -hmm. So. Well, I'm just saying, I, I, I think, uh, I don't know, because I want to do the World v. World stuff. Oh, um, I'm so dying to run around that place and learn how the hell all the systems work. I just want to dig into the game mechanics. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> so wait, how fast does a caravan move? It takes 13 minutes to get from this oh, supply no. depot. I think if we take <laughs> this key 10 minutes after the start, then we can get the supply depot five minutes before then, and then the caravan will get there right as we're capturing the keep. That'll that'll work, I think. Um, yeah. So See, anyway. I don't think World v. World is going to give you a true experience because even all right, everybody's going to rush out in World v. World. We all know it. You know, even the structure PVPers are going to want to see what it's like. But yeah. you're running you're running out there at level one or <laughs> yeah. or level five after you know messing around in PVE like for a little three bit. Abilities. 
And yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't have any traits unlocked. You don't have anything. So you're not getting a true feel for for anything in that World of World will except rue for the, the day I learned Fireball. Yeah, because imagine, <laughs> all right, imagine all of us doing it in in beta coming up uh, without elite skills, and then when we actually get into game, imagine two Zergs hitting each other with full sets of elite skills. You know, for example, <laughs> oh, no. um, it's going to be a whole different game. That's thought. it's just I don't know. It's yeah. one of those things. I think everybody. And I, I know I'm wrong, but everybody should be spending 100% of their time in structured PvP <laughs> because <laughs> everything else is so, so set to All change, you know? To but that even end, though, PvP set to change, that's my That was my point. I mean, everybody's talking about builds, and they're posting build calculators all over the place, and here's my build, and here's that build, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And I'm thinking, just in the last two months, I've seen these traits change like three times. Why am I trying to memorize and figure out what I want to do? But you can still learn the basic mechanics, Bridger. Oh, I mean, absolutely. The, I There's don't have that. to fill your your bar with dodge. You know, <laughs> if, 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 you, if you go out and you start learning how to dodge on your own. No, and... I agree with that completely. I'm simply <laughs> explaining why I haven't specifically looked at any of. I mean, I have a little bit. I. I I crouched a little bit, but I, my plan was to not look at any of the, the skills and stuff that was on the wiki because I know it's so subject to change. I didn't want to ha have to like completely remember, but now that we're actually getting into the game, we're three iterations later on the trait system. I think we're a lot closer to what it's going to be, so I'm really going to be getting in there and trying out a bunch of different elementalist builds in PvP and, and doing that. However, as the host of the show here, I have to know everything, so I'm also going to be going in the PvE. I'm also going to go in the world <laughs> versus world, and, uh, and, and so I'm going to be trying to split my time. Maybe I'll even do one each day like I'll do PvE on Friday world versus world on Saturday or, or Sunday and then P PvP the other times are split in you know whenever I feel like it like I definitely want to do a ton of PvP though because I really really want to be able to kick freelancers ass uh, <laughs> that's all so, so there great, is to great. it I got it I got to hear it man what are you going to concentrate on Oh, I'm going to structured PvP all weekend. I gotta figure stuff out. There are black all holes right. in all my builds that I gotta. <laughs> you know what, like it heals me, but for how much? I gotta figure this out. I gotta, I gotta have, like, how much does compassion open. actually I like, do? I need to do that too because I want to know all the. Ah, oh, you, you just need to know if that centaur can attack you for three more seconds. I mean, <laughs> uh. we have to know if that spike's gonna kill us or not. I can finally figure out how useless the trebuchet is in Battle of Kylo. Oh, uh, don't, don't, don't go there. Oh, half the, half gonna... the chat's going to be up in arms. <laughs> Here come the flames. <laughs> Listen, that trebuchet throws rocks. All right. I, you know, I got to admit, though, uh, before we move on to the next point, I was completely wrong. I, I, I sort of think after watching uh, all that recent footage that the trebuchet is going to be worth it. <laughs> I have to say, Bridger, you were right. You were right. Yes. You'll never hear me say that again. Bridger won. <laughs> I'm still I'm freelancer still skeptical, thirty. So we'll see. I'm on my way to coming back. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're we're gonna be looking forward, and and I'm sure we're gonna meet a bunch of uh, Tales of Tyria fans in there. It's gonna be a good time. I can't wait. I know you guys can't wait. Let's stop talking about it so we don't work ourselves up and get the jimmies all rustled. So hype train. Oh wait, are we are we planning things. anything though? Like on. Uh, should we mention something about well, we're gonna gonna do something like Sunday night with yeah, everyone? No, 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 yeah, I said that at the beginning. Were you not here? No, but okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be doing we're trying to figure out how we can cast a match on Sunday. Let's let's put it that way. We thought we had a method, it's shut down, it's not working anymore. We've got to figure out because we don't have a spectator mode, so we're trying to figure out a way around. If anybody has any ideas to help us out, I mean what what our original plan was to do is have a bunch of streamers uh, playing in the game, and then the casters would actually have the streamers input those streams into XSplit, but apparently that has been shut down in Justin TV slash Twitch TV, so we, we have to figure out another way to do it. And there may be a way to run a, a media server on each of the streamers' computers and their XSplit streams to the media server, and then the media server goes to... It's, it sounds really complicated. If anybody knows an easy way to do something like that, I'd love to hear from you. Feedback at TalesOfTeria.com. Moving on. <clears throat> uh, we have... Uh, let's see. There is Guild Wars 2, or sorry, GW2Builds.org. I have to say, there's been about three or four build calculators out there. Have you guys seen this one? This is by far of, uh, yeah, because there are a lot of them. Everybody seems and their brother has a build calculator. But <laughs> this one, uh, I had the pleasure of looking at just, I think it was two days ago, and it is... It just has everything conveniently in front of you, whereas the other ones you kind of have to meander through everything. Um, but it is amazing. I recommend it to everybody. PVE, PVP, it doesn't even matter. Go to this site. 
and uh, it's gw2builds.org. Uh, it is amazing. You can see everything right in front of you. You can save it. You can share it also, which is really neat. You can actually click share and just yep. give somebody the link. Um, it's really, really awesome. And it has, I think it pretty much has everything that's in the game. Like they've done the tool tips and everything. So really, really it, awesome. I think it's also useful for um, to, to see how your keys are going to be mapped in game. You know, it's showing you, you, you have one through five and there's the, the six through zero, but how your one through five is going to change depending on, like, for an engineer, for Who example. Who uses you got six the bomb through kit. zero? Well, I'm just saying, well, <laughs> obviously, you're talking about six He's talking zero. about slot skills. You don't have your key <laughs> play up <laughs> for the weekend. I'm saying, I mean, you see how your one through it. five skills change with different, for an engineer example, like, different kits and stuff. So it's just interesting to kind of know where buttons are going to be when the game actually comes out. So uh, great. Just curious, fellow fellow PvP or in arms, what uh, what's what skill, what buttons do you use on your keyboard? Like, um, it depends where I'm putting my hand. That's what it's gonna rely on. Hey, hey, hey! This is a family show. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, I don't know. I, I think I'm the weird one that uses ESDF as my movement keys. I don't keys think that's and, weird. I think that's there's probably I'm five or ten percent yeah. people use that. It's it's. I, it's the same exact scheme. It's just slightly moved over a little bit to access a few more buttons. I don't see a problem with it. I yeah. stick all my buttons on my mouse. You gain From, access to like four additional buttons, which is awesome. I have the mouse I mean, There's a, a thousand big discussion buttons. over on Team Legacy right now about how, where people are going to have their keybinds, and everyone's coming up with all kinds of crazy ideas. And it's going to be a lot of experimentation, like what's going to work. You have all well, these... I, know I've, I plan on putting one through four is one through four, but moving my five to R. And then having my six through zero skills on my mouse. I, you have all these casuals, these nerds, as Miane would say, that are saying they're going to double tap their move key to dodge. Uh, that just doesn't sound kosher. I don't like the sound no. of that. I'll tell you why that won't work, and it's very simple. It's if you are moving forward and you need to continue moving forward, yep. uh, double tapping W will be a problem because that little split second that you have to pause and then dodge will be the issue. Um, it's it's commonly known by this point that dodge is you know almost like just at a one second immunity like we if you look in the videos mm -hmm. it, even if the the spell or the ranged attack actually hits you that dodge is so long as you're midway through that I think it's like a half second of dodge you will uh, you will still avoid the attack it doesn't matter if it's a giant club going through your body if you're mid dodge <laughs> you, you or don't a take trebuchet any damage. fireball the troll will do no damage to you <laughs> yeah, I actually have so a question. The big thing is, it doesn't matter where you dodge, is what I'm getting at, just that you have a dodge key. So setting it to, uh, I haven't really decided where I'm going to set mine yet, but setting it to shift or Q or whatever, somewhere close, or maybe on your middle mouse button, just so you can dodge, it doesn't matter what direction you're dodging, you'll negate the damage. Now, I, I have a question, though. Go ahead. But I think, I think direction does play a part in your where you want to position yourself oh, yeah, after certainly, you dodge. Certainly, but I think what Freelancer's trying to say is that if you do you don't have to dodge to the right to get out of the way of the arrow. You can dodge into the arrow, and it can go and hit you anyway. <laughs> as long as you're in the dodge animation when the arrow hits you, you're immune to it. That's what he's trying to say. Yeah, you don't yeah, have no, to no, actually get, get that, out of the but... way. Now, that, 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 there is a point to be made in that you can dodge arrows without using the dodge button. You can dodge ranged spells by simply moving, uh, like strafing left or right, when they uh, are fired, or if you're already moving and you stop after the arrow is fired, you can dodge them that way too. That's the way it worked in Guild Wars 1. Basically, when somebody fires a ranged spell at you, it's going to make a prediction based on your current movement, or lack thereof, and fire to the place you will be by the time it gets to you. So if you aren't there because you've stopped moving or because you've started moving, then you can dodge it that way without actually having to... Uh, to, to you know, so that, that, that actually puts a little uh, cool skill-based mechanisms into the ranged combat. Great, you were saying something. Yeah, who's actually going to use the uh, autocast thing? Is anybody going to hear you use the autocast? Because I know I'm not on anything. I might leave it on one just because I wouldn't want to pound the one key when all my other stuff is on cooldown. I might just... I, I'll have to, I have to play around with it. I have to see if it's, I think, if, it's, if, I, if it's something that I need or not. I don't think it will be, but we'll see. I think it's not bad. If I'm gonna put it on one, my. You're one. You're constantly gonna be hitting your one. Yeah. Yeah, but why not bind that to like scroll wheel or something? So like you can just scroll the wheel down easily because <sighs> your finger's already like right there. I don't know. 
What do we got going on here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think uh, I think most people are going to find that um, they're going to leave the autocast to one. You know, I mean, it, it's it's just that number one scale is usually a zero cooldown. I think for almost every class, it's a zero cooldown, right? Yep. Yeah. So it, it, you know, it's it, you don't want to be spamming that that poor keyboard. You know, spamming that <laughs> one key when all your other stuff is on cooldown. Well, I, mean, I, I, I would imagine just... most players are gonna are gonna run through their two through five skills. Uh, maybe blow in a, a, a lead or something, and then they're going to immediately press tilde, switch to their other layout, and then burn through those two to five skills. And then they're just going to simply decide uh, which number one skill on, let's say, a staff versus a scepter uh, is more effective in their scenario. And that's that's going to be pretty much what everybody does. The difference between players is that use of two to five, how do they lay that out so it actually does what it needs to? Because a lot of people, I think, starting out the game are just going to spam two through five and hope that it kills whatever they're trying to kill. And uh, <laughs> and they're going to find out that without stacking them properly or using your utility skills as well, it doesn't quite work like that. So I don't know. People got. I've been reading the forums and community forums in a couple different places, and there's a lot of people just saying this is a spam two through five game, and then you uh, switch weapons and do the same thing. There were a lot of people saying, no, that's not true. Yeah, and I think that's going to be, uh, they're going to get a nice wake-up call. I think that's why you need to play structured. Like, that's the reason I'm going in there, because mm -hmm. I feel the PvE content, you're going to be like, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Whereas in PvP, you're going to actually have to learn, like, when do I use this number three? When do I use that number four? When do I use that number five? I'm hoping... I'm hoping because I mean we've we've seen that they they've been giving the uh, the PVE uh, AI units bots mobs there we go mobs <clears throat> some of the types of characteristics that players would have like the ability to knock you down the ability to call in reinforcements you know it, you know and you can click you can see them in the game and it'll show you know knocks down fears or something like that underneath the thing and somebody pointed out that the higher levels you get the more kinds of abilities that the, the mobs seem to have so I like that that's in the game and hopefully that will make the higher levels of PvE more engaging in that way where you will have to pay attention and use your stun and your dodge at the right moment to make sure that he can't wipe you out in one shot so but I, I, I agree with you completely that for, for now if you want to get that that timing down if you want to get how to use how to really play your class PvP is the way to do it uh, but before we get off on a further tangent, I wanted to point out a couple <laughs> other things about this builds website because it is really cool. You can go into the browse build section. This is what makes it better than every other one. It'll save builds and then you can click on a build and it'll show you what the person has. It'll show you all this stuff. Um, it'll, it even gives them uh, – sometimes you can, you can create like a guide. Like, I turned mine into a guide and not just a build, so it has some text at the bottom explaining why this is the build that I chose. And any of the things, you can shift-click, and it'll open up the Guild Wars 2 wiki. That is just brilliant! That just Because eventually, this is going to have way more information that can fit on a tooltip, probably. So, I, I love this. Uh, and I just wanted to point out those other cool things. You can vote up and down. Somebody voted mine down! <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> Who was I'm not it? Surprised. We'll find them. All right. Well, I just really like it. And you can change profession. You can browse by category. I don't know what other would be. Structure PvP, PvE, world versus world, other. other. Is that role-playing? Like, I'm going to equip my <laughs> sword. Well, I'm going to equip my great sword. Oh, dear. We've just don't hate gone on the on great that. sword. We've just gone on that. Toward... Okay. <clears throat> Jump into shark here again. in the first uh, 36 minutes. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, this is... The next topic here we've got, um, and this is an interesting one. A few days ago, ArenaNet posted a new video containing an interview with Jonathan Chaplin Shap, Sharp, uh, so, who is a game designer at ArenaNet. The video in question can be found here. There's a link, blah, blah, blah. In this video, it's discussed that players will be matched against each other by their aggregate glory, which is basically what we've understood is that you will earn glory in structured PvE, a uh, PvP, sorry, structured PvP, based on your personal performance in the match. Winning and losing the match doesn't matter, as far as I can tell. You don't get a more glory for winning the match. You get glory for capturing points, you get glory for killing players, basically. And maybe for completing the secondary objectives of the match. And the glory will unlock structured PvP uh, uh, aesthetic rewards that we've talked about in the past. Now, what this launched a discussion that just continued onto the internet forever was 
Well, okay, you've got glory, but glory's just a factor of time spent, isn't it? Maybe some people can earn glory faster because they're better, but in the end, that's a really bad way to match people up. Any thoughts? I completely agree with you, Bridger, and whoever mentioned that uh, originally, because if if I suck at PvP, but I am a at-home, you know, whatever, and I just uh, I don't work, and I'm just playing the game nonstop... That system is basically saying that I am more worthy of being in a high tier game than somebody that is really good at the game and plays maybe two nights a week. You know, it's, um, I don't know. It's, it, I'm surprised that they decided to go with that. I really am. There, there has to be some, some form of attrition. You know, if I get 300 glory doing the same thing every match and I am, we'll say, at the top of the list, it should automatically. Uh, say automatically scale to where I'm only getting maybe 50 glory every match at that point, like StarCraft does. Um, I hope it's not one of those where it's linear, where no matter how long I've been playing, I get the 300 glory, you know, theoretically. Yeah. So and... then what takes precedent, practice or innate skill? <laughs> <laughs> or, or unemployment. Oh. <laughs> now we've got a third factor in here. Now, this is the way they describe it. They said, glory is going to allow you to look at a player, and it allows us to say how much they have been playing. If they've been playing a lot, we can kind of make some assumptions on how good they're going to be, and we can put them in the correct pool to get a good game. So basically, they are acknowledging that they understand that this is an assumption. It's not a perfect uh, EL, ELO sort of system of, of matching up players against each other based on their skill. It's simply a measurement of time, how much they have played. Their experience level, not their actual skill level. And to that extent, it sounds like they decided we're not going for a I'm... super accurate thing. This is just trying to keep people in a general skill pool. Like, the players who have played a lot longer, the players who have played medium level, and the noobs. And keep those three pools separate. It sounds like that's what they're trying to do. If so, I think it's going to work. Is it enough? It's, I'm, I'm saying in before, the structured PVPers make a name for those noobs that do mass game right now. Just oh, saying. That's... They're going to... They're going to create a name. I'm not going to be the one, but somebody in the community is just going to make a catchy name <laughs> to identify those players that they get teared up with in the higher-ranked glory matches that just mass game, and they don't know what they're doing either way. I'm telling you, it's going to happen, and, and oh, it's, yeah. going to bring, it's going to bring down the structured PvP scene. It's, uh, I don't see why they didn't just implement like a basic ELO system. I don't understand that. If I win, I get such and such points based on the skill level of the enemies I'm facing. I don't see why that's so hard to implement. Yeah, and maybe, I mean, this is based on one comment in one video, so this may not be the full system. This may be simply the the pub quick match sort of a thing that they just write off. I mean, we know for a fact that you can join servers on your own. So maybe a lot of people are going to join servers that they know other good players play at, for example. Maybe there's a Team Legacy server that we set up and, you know, we invite the, the, the community to play there and the people in the know will join there and maybe they'll be better. Who knows? But maybe there's a hidden factor, something, because I think StarCraft 2 has like a hidden ranking in there somewhere that's your actual it ranking. Yep. And then yep. they kind of show you these bars that go up all the time, but your actual ranking is hidden in there. So maybe it's going to be the same kind of thing. They're going to put this glory system in that so the people that don't know any better are going to go, yay, I'm getting points all the time. <laughs> and the people that actually do know are going to look in the profile and find the ELO, the, uh, ELO ranking in there somewhere. For those of you that don't know, ELO is uh, very simply, if you beat someone you will gain points based on the difference in your rank and their rank. And if you lose to someone, you're going to get you're going to lose points based on the difference between your rank and their rank. So if you beat someone that's better than you, you're going to get a lot more points on your ranking than you will if you beat somebody who you were supposed to beat, who you were much better than. It's much harder to do. It's designed for a chess-based system where you have draws and where you have two players. There are adapted systems like Microsoft's True Skill that's designed to create basically balanced matches which come down to the wire which are the most exciting matches i think most of us can agree and that's why most people are saying glory isn't good enough we want matches to be tight and very close we don't want a guess we don't want these you know nine really good players 
that are all matched up together and one person who can't learn to not drop a nail on his foot, much less to <laughs> dodge when he's supposed to. So he just spams games all day and he just never learns about anything and he gets matched up and so now one team is crippled because they've got a bad player and this match that would otherwise be amazing, the, the clash of the titans becomes this, well, you've got 20% of your team that's basically dead weight, so now you're going to lose kind of a situation. So yeah. that's why it's important, but I'm going to withhold my judgment until we see how the system actually works. We don't necessarily have all the information yet. I'm hoping that there's something like that in the background. All Definitely. right. Any other, any other comments from... Great, I didn't hear from you on this. Did you weigh in? I just think it's people getting rustled over like very, very small comments that are and, things, and systems that are probably going to change before launch easily and we know Let's that the, so. the main system of ranking is based on teams right it's not based on individual yep. players so when you have your team if you want to get into an actual competitive match you can take your team and you can sign up for one of these pickup tournaments they're automated tournaments as soon as eight teams sign up they all go head to head in, in matchups over the course of like an hour or so and then the winner of that actually gets rewarded with qualifier points and those are what's going to matter in terms of ranking we still don't know exactly how that system's going to work yet either but that sounds like a better method uh at least uh, for the time being. So, let's go on to the mailbag, ladies and gentlemen. From Dak. Quote, I have been listening to you guys on Tales of Tyria for quite a while, and this is just a subject I would like you guys to make a bit more clear as your audience grows. Each time you guys talk about the armor and weapon system in Guild Wars 2, the system always starts to drift to sounding something like a WoW system where the larger boots win. <laughs> I would like it if you guys could talk about how the runes work a bit better in detail to future Guild Wars 2 players so that they can understand how all the power is going to be obtainable from merchants as soon as you ding 80 for a reasonable price so that everyone is on a level playing field. Dak. Thank you, Dak. Uh, I'm sorry. Unquote. Thank you, Dak. And uh, so, who wants to take this one? Anybody want to chime in? Can I point out one thing really quick? Yes. And wow, it wasn't your boots; it was your shoulder pads. Oh. How massive your shoulder the pads. The bigger were. the pauldrons. Just got to clarify that one. The there. bigger the pauldrons, the bigger the. Hmm. Yeah. I got you. No, nope, not going there. Yeah. I already did my one for the day. I'm done. <laughs> but, uh, I guess that I'll, was mine. I'll tell you what. I'll explain. I'll explain it real quick. Okay. Um, for, for those of you who have not been uber following Guild Wars 2, uh, Dak, you are right. Um, when you reach level 80, it's not about so much your gear and your armor because everybody is going to have the same relative armor and gear. The, the base stats on all the level 80 stuff is the same. Everybody watching the podcast, when you get to level 80, you're on the level playing field with everybody. At that point, what makes Guild Wars 2 so great is that you can equip what's called runes. Uh, you can equip what's called sigils. Um, you can equip uh, all sorts of fun little things to your armor and your weapon uh, and essentially customize your armor the way you want. So to give you an example, and this is completely made up, but if I wanted to uh, equip six runes of the wolf, which gives me, let's say, attack speed and... Uh, I put two or three uh, in, and it gives me a bonus to attack speed. I put another rune into a, a piece of armor, and it gives me a, a, boast, a, bo blah, a boost <laughs> to my uh, to whatever it might be. I can I can equip myself like that. But once I set my runes like that in my armor, that's it. That's the only buffs I get. Now, whether or not that works well against another player is entirely on how I take advantage of that rune set. Now, aside from runes, equipping your armor as such, which, again, that armor is all base level with everybody else, you also have sigils, which I believe go into your weapon. Right, Bridger? Yeah, sigils go into yep. the weapon, and okay. they, I think, function similar to runes, but I don't know. Yep. I'm going to go to the wiki so, right now. Yeah, so the <laughs> idea of sigils, um, I'll just make sure it's the weapon and not the other way around. So the idea of sigils is... Just like your armor, how you can equip a certain series of runes and get the, the bonuses off of that, and then you're done. There's no enchanting, there's no gems, there's no none of that. Um, you can also do the same with your weapon. So in WoW, we all know, um, you know, we do talk about WoW a lot because, let's be honest, 90% of our audience comes from WoW. i just throwing it out there. Uh, in WoW, when you got to a max level, your weapon was determined on how much you grinded in either A, PvP, or, or rating in PvE. And your weapon can progressively got better. Now, again, like armor, uh, to everybody not really sure how the system works, it's just the same. At level 80, my greatsword at base does the exact same damage as your greatsword. Doesn't matter. If it's a level 80 greatsword, it does the exact same damage. Now, at that point, these sigils, much like how runes affect armor... <laughs> it's, it's sigil. 
Sigils, sigils, sorry. Um, <laughs> I think you're saying seagulls. In the chat. Seagulls. <laughs> so these sigils essentially will allow you to customize your weapon to, say, do plus 5% damage or to do life steal or whatever it might be. And um, at that point, it's it really is based on how well you customize yourself to your play style between your sigils and your runes to the other players that are setting up theirs their way. And that's the great thing about Guild Wars 2. I think we can all agree on that because it it is no longer about me grinding 20 hours on a on a end you know end raid to get a higher tier sword than you. It is quite literally I spend my money to set up my character the way I think I'm going to perform best. Whether or not that does better against you is completely up to skill at that point. Yeah, and I, I think that's a great system. I think, I think also having the the traits also kind of affecting those other you know the. Vitality and power and toughness and all that stuff um, adds that another level of customization that lets you, if you're better at your class and you know what you're doing and you have a better build, per se, instead of having better equipment, yeah, comes into play. And, and the other thing that my understanding is with regards to these upgrade components is what everything is called. And I think accessories get jewels sort of slotted yes. into them? Is that the other thing? So we've got jewels, sigils, and runes. And the, the thing that I think is the same with all of these upgrade components is if you want to change it, you can remove it from the armor, but I think it's destroyed in the process. Does that yeah. make sense? I think I read that on the wiki mm -hmm. somewhere. And what that means is, I mean, people have been asking, okay, why would people want to ever get gold later on in the game if you already bought everything? Everybody's going to want gems. Nobody's going to want gold. No, and so the, there's going to be, like, this massive gold inflation. Well, if you want to respec your armor, quote-unquote, if you've decided to change a build, or if you, you know, I never want to use this armor set again, you can you take all the runes out of it, but you basically, I think maybe you can sort of recover some pieces of them, like you can salvage it or something to that effect, but essentially the runes themselves are destroyed. You might get some pieces back. So that is going to be a way that, and you can buy all of the sigils, all of the runes, and all of the jewels at NPC merchants. You don't have to hunt for them. You don't have to go out into the wild and beat a raid boss or something ridiculous in order to get this one rune. Everybody has access to all of them. Now, I, I don't know if any of them are more expensive than others, but I don't know. We'll have to see. So, uh, so, so uh, one of the, I, I just, I'm not going to mention his name, but one of the TL members, he's like, what if you could put materia in your armor and your weapon? <laughs> oh, no. then, then my wife would be over the moon. <laughs> yes! You could put materia in seagulls. How about that? <laughs> seagulls. I just have this image of somebody trying to shove a big crystal ball into a bird's... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good times, good times. And we're going to move on. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll never look at a seagull the same way again. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I think, let me see. Do we have any other any other things to talk about here tonight? I think we should end a little early here so we can get a good amount of time to set up for the LOL match. Does that make sense? Are we are we have any, any final thoughts before we wrap up here today? Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to Frag World about the town hall meeting. Oh yes, I'm sorry we didn't talk about that. What you you present? I know. You were, you were I, present. I know, Tell us what was the town hall meeting uh, that you're talking about? What happened there? What was the idea? Um, well, basically, Frag World, uh, that is FragWorld.org, uh, set up a town hall meeting for all of the guilds. Uh, it didn't matter if you were a RP PVP. Didn't matter. It was just a it was a, a friendly, open invitation to get all of the guilds together and have a big talk about everything from, uh, let's go down the list here, is eSports, your plans, your recruiting, um, other guilds that were just starting up, how you could help them out. It was, I, I just wanted to give a shout out because this is the kind of initiation um, from just different big names. Frag World is, is huge in other games and they're jumping into Guild Wars 2. Uh, I thought it was just incredible that they decided to take and just start something. This is going to be a monthly event. I wanted to plug it in Tales of Tyria because if your guild, uh, w there's probably 100 guilds in this chat right now in, in our stream, but if your guild was not at that last meeting, he is holding another one. I believe it will be on, uh, it'll be a week from the, tw or a month from the 21st. So uh, skip it. It's like the 19th next month, uh, a month after. So anyways, you'll, you'll see a post on it. But the big deal is, I would love to see more and more guilds show up to this because we got so much out of the way. Uh, we talked about esports and how we can all try to push it forward, which is obviously a, a thing dear to me. Uh, we talked about World v. World, GVG. We even talked about uh, things about RP and stuff. So 
doesn't matter what type of guild you are. If you can come and attend the event, uh, fragworld.com, they're the ones hosting it. It's on GW2 Guru. Um, pop in, say you'll be there next month, and uh, it'll be awesome. I, I look forward to see a lot more guilds show up for that. For those of you just joining us, I saw a question. Guild Wars, uh, sorry, Tales of Terraria next Sunday at 8 will not be official. It's going to be on Monday is the actual recording of the show. However, on Sunday at 8, we're going to try and do something awesome. So tune in for that, uh, and we'll, you'll find out what it is then. Uh, and that'll be good. So let's see here. Oh, thank you. Got the link from Okuraku. He sent me the link to the town hall thing. I'm going to put that in the show notes. So if you guys want to listen to, I think it's about an hour or so here. Actually, two hours. Holy crap. So anyway, uh, you, can, you can parse through that. That's kind of what I did. I kind of skipped through and listened to different things. Uh, there were a lot of introductions from the various guilds, and they, they talked about, you know, world versus world and what they're expecting. It was, it was a cool little thing. So I'm going to put the link to that in the show notes right now, and you guys can check that out and I think with that we're gonna put the stream on hold for a second I'm pretty sure we're gonna be going over to uh, I drop stream in just a moment but for now I will be back to direct you in just a minute so we will have so much to talk about next week Bridger we won't even know what to do with ourselves absolutely so let's let's end <laughs> the actual Guild Wars deal here the official uh oh the official skip oh. I'm not playing a CD. Come on. <laughs> it's skipping. It's a WAV file. How does it skip? God. How does it not skip? I'm going to... That's a good question. There's no moving parts. That's how it doesn't skip. It's All almost right. as bad as Sigils. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. See you later. Stand by. We'll see which stream we're going to. We'll direct you guys to it in just a moment.